going on everybody? Good morning. Me and Scott, we got our little puffy Ademidus morning faces going on. So, it is officially, oh my gosh, you can't see that. Hold on. I'll push it on the, on the radio. It is 5.19 a.m. and we are on the road. We were up just before five o'clock on our way to Alberta. Calgary, Alberta is our first stop to be very specific. Well, maybe kind of Banff because like, you just have to go through Banff, but Alberta nonetheless. So here we are in Banff, or just outside Banff. Look at these mountains. It's actually, it's actually a little chillier out because we're obviously up at pretty high elevation, but man, what a drive. And like there's, okay, mountains there, big mountains here, big mountains there, big mountains back there. This is everywhere. It's actually like, it's super impressive. Hey everybody, Joel Hans here, and today we are at Grumman's, which is a Jewish deli on the fringe of downtown Calgary. Here, of course, my good friend, Mr. Scott, and today we have this big Zadie 2.0 challenge. So this is a absolutely delicious looking Jewish deli sandwich. So on the bottom, we have what is a beautiful looking Reuben sandwich. We then have the grilled special on the middle. We have a flat bush sandwich. We then have a kosher hot dog and a fried pickle. Everything looks delicious. All the ingredients are coming super, super fresh. Some of the pickles, in, in fact, are even being flown in from Montreal. And of course, we have a side of a smoked meat poutine. Challenge itself weighs just over 13 pounds. Just kidding, three pounds. And we have a total of 18 minutes to complete this. If we complete it in 18 minutes, we get it for free. If not, it's 30 bucks. The coolest thing is win or lose, $2 from this challenge is actually donated to a local charity. So that's why we're here today, support local. This is an awesome Jewish jelly which has been around in the Calgary area for a number of years now. So that's Scott, what do you think? Oh, it looks delicious. And we've driven an extra long way to get here today. We've driven about six, seven, seven hours to get here. So uh, I think we're both pretty hungry. We're pretty hungry. Yeah. So let's get started here just momentarily. All right, everyone, so I think we're ready to start here. Scott, of course, got his timer. Scott, you wanna give us a countdown? Yeah, we'll go from five, four, Three, two, one, let's begin. All right, what is it, 18 minutes? Get it shut off? Mm -hmm. Hey everyone, welcome to today's video as we take on this Jewish deli sandwich challenge. So what's super cool about this challenge and really was enticing for us, um, not only the well-known location, but also the fact that this challenge, regardless of win or lose, is supporting charity. That's right. And I don't remember the name off the top of my head, but if I remember correctly, it was kind of like a local um, at-risk woman in children's shelter. Very delicious. Mm -hmm. So in addition to supporting charity, you also do get three full sandwiches and then their side of poutine. Um, plus, I guess, a half hot dog and the potato pancake and the deep fried pickle. Uh, so yeah, it was pretty cool. So that's basically what it was comprised of. It was um, three sandwiches all stacked on top of each other and then again the poutine and blah blah blah. So overall really tasty. You could definitely tell that these were not you know commercially um, standardized products being used. Flatbush with the turkey is great. This salami is great. It's like, it's very fresh, very authentic, very well flavored. The salami or salumi, as they were calling it there, is incredibly just like, oh, it's so, it's very cute. You get that real strong cured flavor, um, very kind of, I'm gonna use the term spicy, and I don't mean like a heat spice, but just very, very flavorful, very, very spiced. You can tell, tell that there's like, you know, that salt, that probably potassium and nitrates kind of on the tip of your tongue. Um, by you know the cured uh, ing ingredients used to cure it. Additionally, you had the 
um, lovely, lovely corned beef on that Reuben there. I'm a big fan of beef in general, so it was absolutely delicious. Um, definitely, you could taste the cloves. You could taste the peppercorns in that, and that's something that they made there. So really uh, enjoyed the overall taste of this challenge. It is, I would call it, you know, on the easier side of the challenges. Uh, you know, somewhere about three, maybe three and a half, like, you know, in the lower end. Um, you do have 18 minutes to complete it, which is where I think a lot of the individuals probably have the difficulty with. I know, you know, people watching these videos, watching my videos and watching YouTube videos, our standards kind of skew, but they've had many people that have unsuccessfully attempted this challenge and the overall record previously was about 10 minutes that being said I like I'm in full support again of supporting charity so when you can do charity work well you know at least support charity and eat at the same time why not the Montreal style smoked meat is really delicious as well love the peppercorn taste the clove taste for those who are not familiar what poutine is, poutine is french fries with gravy and cheese curds. And then what they did uh, to make this one unique, make it a smoked meat poutine, is added in a traditional quote unquote Montreal style smoked meat. Again, the origins of this place have strong Montreal roots, hence a lot of the ingredients coming from there. Um, and just kind of that traditional Montreal smoked meat flavors um, appearing throughout the uh, menu. The sandwiches did also come warm, which I very much like warm sandwiches, um, and really everything just tasted really good overall, like I have no complaints. Cheddar pancake? Of the three different sandwiches, definitely my favorite was the Reuben, which was the one on the bottom. Again, I'm a big beef fan, that corned beef was really, really good. Um, then after that, I would say the salami or the uh, grilled special it was called was great. <clears throat> No, smoked meat poutine. So with that, I believe that's pretty much all I have to say about the challenge. Again, overall really nice staff, um, a pretty cool location, not to mention great food. So with that, I'll let you enjoy the rest of the video as we support charity again, win or lose, they're donating to charity, so it's pretty cool in that regard. And on top of that, you know, if you ever want to come try it out, you get a meal in the meantime. So enjoy the rest of the video, everybody. And if you're interested in seeing some of the most amazing views from my footage of Banff, Lake Louise, Jasper, that kind of area, definitely be sure to check that out at the end of the video. It was super, super cool, super stunning. Um, again, literally one of the most noted sites in Canada and mountain picturesque mountain ranges in the world. So with that, everybody, let's see what happens. I'll let you enjoy. Left no doubt today. About five minutes, 25 seconds for myself. Scotch is finishing up here. We only got a couple bites left on that poutine. Very flavorful. Smoked meat is a nice addition. Big fan of the Reuben. The owner Peter here is a super cool guy. What I really like is, so he named this deli after his mother. And I think like, that's just the perfect, you know, story. Like Jewish deli, named after your mother. Right. It's perfect. The food's really good. Definitely recommend. Scott is just about done now. And just like that, six minutes right in the dot. So that's Scott. Good job, my dude. All right, thank you. So that everybody, hope you enjoyed the video. Super tasty challenge. Again, always for a great cause. We're very much supporters of local charities, charities in general. So if you're ever in the Calgary area, you wanna try a food challenge, definitely something to consider. Of course, donate to charity. And if not, come by Grimmins. Excellent taste and stuff. I absolutely love the smoked meat. What was your favorite kind of flavor? I think it was everything. Yeah. I don't know. I really liked the poutine right at the end. It was uh, it really tasty. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, with that, everybody, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Of course, until next time, stay happy, healthy, hungry. Please give this video a like. Consider subscribing to both our channels. Scott Eats, Joel Hansen. And at that, of course, I have to kind of say don't do what we do, but, you know, just support charity. I, I do promote that. So, until next time. White Peak Mountains. The crazy thing is, it doesn't look. I mean, like you look at them, yeah, and 
I mean, obviously they're huge, but you don't realize, like, obviously how big they are. No, like, if you, you had to, if you tried to climb, that, that's exactly it. I've had to get a climb over here. Travel. It would take like a thousand years. That is like stuff you see on movies right there. Big, big mountains. And now there's no snowy peaks in this view, but they're there. And again, just huge mountains. And there's some deforestation happening right there, but the rest of it is just big, big, huge freaking mountain vessels. As you guys can barely see this, but here we are just driving literally on the cliff side of a mountain. This is a big mountain in front of us. So high up here, the clouds are all in the mountains. You can't even see the top, and then look down there is a great big valley. Let's see if this valley appears here in a second. Again, big mountain that you can't see. And there is a big, big valley. Uh, there you go. Kind of, you guys can see down there is water. There's a big valley. It's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy, folks. Up in the clouds. And just look at those mountains. Those are some serious white cap mountains. And here this is a wildlife overpass. They built these so the wildlife walk over those and not on the highway. And now it's focusing on the windshield, the dot there. But there you go. Look at this. Look at those mountains. That is like the Lord of the Rings style of stuff right there. That is crazy. Crazy. It is cool though. We are in Lake Louise, Alberta, and these are very, very large mountains. And again, just like world renowned, picturesque, famous mountains in pictures right here. You know how many postcards they sell with these mountains on them? Thousands. 95 right now. Look at it. Just look at all these beautiful mountains. It's pretty crazy though, huh? Like, there's just so many of them. There's never end. Tons and tons of these. Kilometers and kilometers. Yeah. Crazy mountains. We aren't even in like the hot spot of Banff yet. We're getting there though, but. 25. Pretty good. So here we are in Banff. We're just outside Banff. Look at these mountains. It's actually, it's actually a little chillier out because we're obviously up at pretty high elevation, but man, what a drive. And like there's, okay, mountains there, big mountains here, big mountains there, big mountains back there. This is everywhere. It's actually like, it's super impressive. It's my first time in Alberta in about uh, 16 years. It's been a long time. Long time coming, and it's pretty. We need to try to find a site, a, a scene to get some sightseeing, and it's beautiful. Oh, look, the sun's coming out, even better. It's very pretty. Definitely a sight to be seen up here in Banff, Alberta. And this is downtown Banff. It's uh, definitely going for like a woody lodge kind of cabin look, I would say. Kind of rustic. Of course, you have all these mountains in the background, like everywhere you look, mountains. But yeah, definitely woody. I don't know, all the stores are like Roots Clothing, Alpine Clothing. Oh, there's a Boston Pizza. Summit Gifts. Rock, Paper, Silver. Yeah, there's a... Uh, they're definitely going after the whole, uh, what do you call it? Mountainesque, lodgy, wood, cabin vibe. And then the mountains. Bam, there's my Haley Hansen store, there's me. Very nice. And there's this big building, whatever the heck it is. Kinda looks like a castle or something. And uh, more mountains, of course. All of them mountains. Just surrounded by the mountains. Banff Springs Hotels. Bow Full Falls View. Just look at them. Mountains don't end. They don't end. 
And here's the uh, Fairmont Spring View or Banff Springs or whatever it's called. It is definitely a freaking huge castle looking building. And uh, obviously mountains all around it. It's closed currently, but was it Fairmont? Banff Springs, that's what it is. It's great. How about a hotel in the mountains? Look at the castle and look at the sky in the mountains. There's another uh, look of the Fairmont. Again, very famous Fairmont Banff Springs, which is just absolutely massive. People pay loads of money to stay there, obviously. And I mean, the more money you spend, the higher the room you get, to which you get to obviously get a better view of all these mountains, which surround the area. You can look at, obviously, this pretty dang clear looking I mean, it's like a little greeny, but it's pretty dang clear looking mountain, I guess spring water, I guess you call it, the Banff Springs. Here is another big mountain. Like, and then there's a thousand more mountains down there. These ones are peaked. This one is not as white capped. It's intense, man. It is really intense. This is the area where you realize that Canada really does have vast w wildlife and wilderness. Vast wildlife and wilderness of Canada when there's just endless mountains and... Another view of the famous Fairmont Banff Springs, which is very beautiful. And again, the mountains and just this water and everything is just superb. Superb. The way the sun hits that water, the sun hits the sky and the mountains. It's crazy, y'all. Crazy. So far in Banff, we've seen a lot of wildlife. We saw a couple deer, we saw a black bear, and there's also some uh, wild, wild gold wolf dog thing down there. I'll show you guys. It's a little, little, little black one, too. As you can see, these wild animals, we're at an advantage point being up above them, but they obviously look pretty, uh, pretty vile. You can see the one, you can see the one must have killed somebody. He, he has her, uh, like the, his, her remains, her clothing on him as like a tie, as a trophy of his kill. I would not want to get stuck in that the way it's flowing over those rocks. So to give you a brief history, apparently it says that in the early 1800s is when artists first kind of came across the beauty of Banff and in sharing these pictures and art illustrations attracted people to visit Banff and then in 1933 the University of Alberta Department of Extension opened up a small summer arts program, which then inspired many other people to come and do arts and draw not only the Fairmont, but the area and the beauty. Um, so that's pretty cool. And now it says it basically is just, you know, a legacy of that today and it's natural beauty. Here, they talk about the Canadian uh, Pacific Railway which was completed in 1885, which connected the Atlantic to the, to the Pacific. So that'd be all the way from the East Coast to the West Coast, um, in which the hot springs and whatever in the Banff area would draw people by train. Um, and it became a financial success of the railway and then lots of tourism because like there's like hot springs. So yeah, if you're not familiar, Banff obviously has lots of beautiful mountains and stuff. It also has lots of mountains. Here's the Fairmont back in, 1900 that's pretty crazy here it is in 1920 1970 to what you saw today in 2020 so yeah what a history 
about not only obviously that hotel, which was obviously around for a couple hundred years, as I'm not surprised it looks like a castle, but of this, well, it is a beautiful area. This freaking wooded, crazy, treed, mountainous, one-of-a-kind wonder in Alberta.